as opposed to Identica, which is still cleaner. Uh, I assume maybe half the accounts, maybe that was less visible there, would be some kind of a marketing companies and PR and all kinds of things. And I once in a while get things like, you know, uh, I love Microsoft follows you. And these are actually names of accounts. And these accounts are connected to other accounts, which, uh, as far as I know, Microsoft hires uh, marketing agencies to do what's what they call marketing on Twitter. And mar what is marketing on Twitter? Marketing is Twitter is just creating accounts to pass around all kinds of pro Microsoft messages. And they don't really see anything wrong with that. For Microsoft, they can always just you know blame the company. It's nothing to do with us. We just we just pay the money. And they're a very 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 naughty company. You know they do all kinds of things. And it's we don't endorse that. But but that's what they do. And, and some of the things I, I get, and I think Tim can talk for himself as well about that, is we get responses from all kinds of Microsoft MVPs and employees, and they don't actually give disclosures. And they, in one case, as I, I think, and I produced lots of evidence that one of them, an employee of Microsoft, worked in a so-called technical evangelist, which is a euphemism for shill, uh, was uh, was writing a very nasty. Uh, hit piece about me quoting people to kind of uh, dissociate himself from cursing me and trying to compare me to Unabomber and things like that. And he was then, uh, I don't know if he was doing that, but somebody was passing lots of links to it from Twitter very systematically and trying to kind of feed this, basically, this smear of me, uh, which, which he was trying to, very cleverly, trying to distance himself, to say, I did not say these things, and then quoting all kinds of very obviously anti-Linux websites, very defamatory websites, and trying to basically ensure that he defames the person who criticizes Microsoft. And that was, that was quite an experience that goes back to last year when I also filed a complaint about it to the FTC when they were looking for people to do that. And then he basically disappeared. He just stopped doing that because he realized he was risking his job, which is really to, to do exactly that. So he probably just moved on to doing it to another person. Uh, we're talking about Microsoft Cloud, and, and this is the uh, some of the tactics we see being used to uh, perpetuate and to spread and to uh, give more supposed uh, endorsement to these messages. And and one more thing, I, I, if you see a Microsoft person saying he's going to try Linux, if you know the person really likes Microsoft, it's probably using Linux for uh, attaining some credibility, so later on I'll say, well, I tried Linux, but, or I tried, I've tried Linux and I tried Windows, but Windows is a lot better. And this, this is the, this is one of the trolling tactics, trying to uh, pretend to have mastered both sides and chosen Microsoft. And you, you see lots of that. And, uh, the best, the best person to discredit, to discredit Linux, to discredit Linux or free software and GNU is, is the person who. Uh, who is himself supposed to be on on our side? You have all sorts of that. Uh, yeah, you have all sorts of, of these people. Uh, when Microsoft, if you find a presentation, a very seriously uh, obscene presentation, where they call it basically the best anti, the best presentation on why Linux sucks or something, and that's presented by a person working for the company, they try to quote people who are from Red Hat or people who are uh, in Linux and trying to show that they do not like Linux and they're very selective in their quotes and, and in these documents you find them calling Linux users bigots and trying to describe it as some sort of a religion and encouraging bribing against Linux and all kinds of things. It's it's quite a serious thing. Mm. Yeah, there was there was so there was so much there that I was just patiently waiting on. Um, so I don't know where to start. The the, the first thing was the about back to the New York lawyer and thing. I just love it the fact that the actual website that you've posted is Fox News. I just think that's brilliant. As as far as a, a site that exposes name shifting and shills that oh Fox News, that's that's brilliant. That could not have been any better. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. But the thing is that's that's just so common, sadly. It's companies that just feel they have the right that they can do whatever they like until until they're told otherwise they can do whatever the hell they like and even when they do it and when they're told no you can't do it and there's laws to prevent it they know that they've got so many lobbyists in power that nothing is ever going to come of it they've just got so much money that no one is ever going to, co going to hold them properly to account they've got all the bases covered that they will never have to face the music for any of that 
and they just send out the the message uh, as you said Roy oh that's nothing to do with us that's we hired that company in good faith and you know we'll now sack that we'll warn that company um, and it'll just be a friendly shh don't get caught next time you know um, and that's about it so it is odd I mean I've seen the uh, the what the um I suppose you could you could argue that once you start getting followed by these accounts and they're obviously Windows accounts. Uh, I mean, I had a couple on Identica that were Windows Seven is wonderful or something like that. It was Windows Seven something, and I thought, it's, why the, why are they following me? I mean, is it just have they picked up on the keywords that I mentioned Windows a lot and think, oh, this person must like Windows? But they don't actually read it because I'm I'm promoting Linux. A lot of the time that I mention Windows, it's not in a very positive way. So they're not that whatever filter is picking me up. Um, it, it must it must not be reading the context. <laughs> it might be running on the server. I don't know. They have a uh, there is a company. They have a company called uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure I pronounce this correctly. It's uh, Wagner Edstrom, which is the main marketing company of Microsoft since the 80s. It's used to uh, what's the name of the the founder? I think she was called Laura or Lisa or something. And she was the one of the heads of the marketing people behind the constructing the image around Gates and Microsoft and trying to feed journalists all kinds of stories. And this company, uh, a couple of years ago, wrote quite a few articles because they developed software which monitors Twitter or is supposed to automate all kinds of tasks around Twitter. This is a marketing company. It's not a company that's trying to do a startup. And they have all kinds of patents, actual patents, actual software patents around how they do the marketing around sites like that. And uh, and they have things called buzz marketing and they're supposed to have presence in those sites. So it's most likely if you have a, a Windows 7 account in Identica, it's probably one of those agencies creating some accounts and setting up some script to try and ensure people are thinking about the product even if they don't like the product. They're supposed to have presence in those sites. and. One of the excuses they'll have, well, everyone's doing that, or, you know, or if you don't like it, then, you know, don't be part of it, or uh, something of that sort. And, but in the, the U.S. still, I, as far as I, as, as far as I can tell, and sources, quite good sources, the uh, circulation of money around marketing per year is something like a trillion dollars. It's actually over a trillion dollars per year if you, depends on how you classify marketing and PR and all that. That's a lot of money. That's more than all the oil companies and all kinds of things. And it's estimated that a quarter of the uh, of the money you spend on any any merchandise, be it a car or a uh, toothpaste, a quarter of this money goes towards the marketing that's that's trying to to make you buy actually, this specific uh, thing. Actually, it's, uh, I heard something. Um, I don't know how accurate it is, but the the Hollywood movies, you know, the big blockbuster movies, apparently. Half of their budget, fifty percent, goes as is already set out for marketing. So, so Harry Potter movie, um, the Deathly Hallows Part One, uh, which I'm so looking forward to. I address um, that if they say that costs say two hundred million dollars to make, well actually it costs a hundred million. The, the other hundred is in, is set aside for marketing, for paying for different TV slots at prime time and. Um, paying for journalists to review it at the right time, and it pays into that, that whole thing to get more bums on seats, essentially, to get more in the door. Um, so that's apparently, I don't know if that's accurate. It, it sounds kind of accurate. Probably that around about 50%. It has to make it go viral, because you have to get momentum for people to recommend the film, and what actually happened with the Avatar. You know, once in a while they hit the jackpot, and they get like over a billion or a billion and a half or something like that from one film because it becomes more of a uh, almost like a cult following thing or almost like the, the, the film you have to watch to be part of the conversation and that's when people have to see this film because everyone else is because people feel left out um, I, 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 it's I, kind I of like, know I mean, it's, it's we'll kind of like the spinning the, sorry I was just going to quickly add there it's kind of like the spinning top kind of thing or the, the plates once it gets to a certain momentum and you've got enough people all talking about it and enough people all um, saying, oh, I've seen it, you've got to see it. It, it does become um, something that's self-perpetuating, that you feel that you have to be, um, you have to get involved with it or you're, or you're, you're losing out, essentially. 
No, I agree. With, I, I agree with you, Gordon. I think um, about the budget in terms of our, our marketing. The Harry Potter film was, is a good example because if you look around, certainly around London, on every bus stop and bus and 